Hey everyone, I'm Colin Smith from Photoshop Cafe and today we're going to be looking at the brand new Nick Collection version 5. For those of you not familiar, Nick Collection is a collection of 8 plugins. They were originally created by Nick Software down in San Diego. Then they were acquired by Google and then Google kind of just let them fizz out a little bit. DxO acquired them and this is their second revision. I already did a review on version four, check that out. So the Nick Collection is a collection of eight plugins that are loved by photographers and they do different things. And some of the things they do, they can do better than Photoshop. For example, Define has what I believe the best noise reduction in the industry. The Visa is good for doing uh, color adjustments, you know, kind of like what you would do in Lightroom for tone and color. Uh, perspective gets rid of warping, different things like that in the photos. HDR effects uh, works with HDR images or creating HDR looking images. Uh, color effects is special effects and color. We're going to be looking at this a bit today. Another one we're going to be looking at today is analog effects. Analog effects creates those, those cool retro and kind of analog kind of effects on photos to make them look like, you know, they're not perfect digital photos. Silver effects is a great plugin for working with black and white photography or converting to black and white. And then sharpener, of course, for sharpening. So if you checked out my previous review on the Nick Collection 4, the big thing there was the silver effects and the Visa uh, got the new look and the new interface. Now, Color Effects Pro and Analog Effects Pro have them. Let's start with Analog Effects. Now you can launch it from the filter menu. You can go to the Nick Collection and you can launch any of them from there. Or we can use it from the Selective tool. If you don't see the Selective tool, let me close it. It's a little hard to find. It's actually under the File Automate menu. And then we can go down here to the Nick Selective tool. All right, so let's just click here and go directly into analog effects. So if you look on the left, here's the panel where we have, it, have access to all the different tools. At the top here, we can compare them. So if we click, we can see the before and after. We can change the angle and look at it up and down. You know, we can do a dual view as well if we wanna look at those side by side. So these kind of similar before, but they just have new buttons and we can kind of zoom in. Now, if we go and we look on the right hand side, here's where the settings are for the different tools. All right, let's have a look at how we would use this. So under the camera kit, we have the ability to go through and just choose different things. So why don't we start with a bokeh? So with the bokeh effect, we can kind of move this over and create, you know, kind of a cool depth of field effect, you know, shallow depth of field. Let's just change the size of that. And we can kind of see if we look, notice that tool is added when we start using it. There it is before, there it is after. And then we can add other things in here. So for example, let's add some light leaks in here. So we click on the light leaks and that adds it to the panel. And notice we've got these different types of light leaks that we can just do with a single click. And these are really good results. I actually really like these. I've seen light leaks before that didn't really look really realistic. Um, and we've got different sets. So we've got soft, crisp, dynamic. Let's try some dynamic ones. You can kind of see the difference. So how's a different kind of a light leak? And, you know, we've got all these different tools. Now, what we can do is we can go under the presets. And here they're called cameras. And we can see the different types of cameras. Let's go under in Vogue and let's just choose one just to give you an idea of some of the things that we can do here. Look at all these different options here. Why don't we try the burnt edges and we're just going to apply this to the image and notice what it does is it gives us this look so this is actually a recipe of a number of different tools see these different effects have been applied and all of those are available under camera kit now you can go in and you can change any of these settings like this change some of these frames and you know, of course we can change the light leaks all the different things within here very fun and if we want to just mix it up just hit the very button and we can actually create variations of that effect or we can apply a completely different one let's try something different let's go with the distressed faded and see how we get these kind of overlays now we can change these as the photo plates we can click on different ones and get different looks now, all of these, you know, if that's a little strong, of course, we can take the strength down and just kind of uh, 
blend it in. So we've got control over all these different things. And if we look under the camera kit, you'll see that all of these are here. You can see they're highlighted. So we've got photo plate here, light leaks, those are the items being used. And of course we can add, mix and match any of them we want and we can save our own presets. All right, so that's, let me just uh, click apply here. One other thing worth mentioning, let me undo this. If I right click and I convert this to a smart object, I can actually go under the filter here and I can apply. Let's try something like this just very quickly. Click apply. And notice that we can apply that to a smart object. The nice thing about that is we have the ability to turn it on or off just by clicking on it there. Let me undo this because while I'm here, let me show you something else we have under the selective tool. We have the ability to go in and apply these presets and these are called meta presets because they maybe use more than one product. And you can see there's silver effects, color effects. You can see what products are being used by the icons. So if I wanted to apply one, I could simply click here and now it's going to apply this effect from multiple filters without actually having to launch the filters themselves. And we can see here that we've got an effect here that goes from color effects and then we've got another one from Viviza. So if we turn off the color effects, we can just look at the Viviza adjustment or we could go, you know, vice versa. And we also have the ability to adjust these, just a Photoshop feature here if we just double click. We can bring up our blending options and let's take the Color Effects Pro a little bit lower. Click OK and this will update. And so now it's going to have 50% of Color Effects and 100% of the Vivisif. So it also works as a plugin inside of Lightroom. So let's have a look at this image that I shot out of a helicopter in Kauai. This is Nepali coast and you can see there's a lot of haze on there. Well, let's right click and what we're going to choose is Edit In. So we're going to right click and we're going to choose edit in and let's have a look at color effects pro 5. and why don't we edit the original and if you look in here you'll notice that this also has this nice new modern interface once again the tools presets everything are on the left and then on the right are the settings once we apply it now there's a couple of things that you'll see here that are new and these are a big deal the first one is clear view and this is taken from DxO, same with the grain. So the clear view is a great way to cut through this haze. Let's have a look. Look at this, works really, really well. It's kind of a little bit, you know, like dehaze. You know, maybe some point I'll do a comparison between this and dehaze, but I think in some areas this is cutting through the detail a little bit better. All right, so why don't we apply some kind of a adjustment to the side of it. So now that we've got the different filters, we've got the different categories. So let's go under the, so we can go under nature or travel. Why don't we just use the travel one and let's apply some kind of a filter here. So let's apply sunlight. So we're just gonna click and it's gonna add the sunlight filter, which looks really nice, but it's going across the whole photo. I just want it in this area here and I don't want it going into the water. So one of the things that's new inside of color effects and also in analog effects is the enhanced control points. So we click plus, this is gonna enable me to create a control point and just apply this adjustment exactly where the control point is. Now, if I go and drag it across there, you'll notice that the sunlight effect, see how it moves around with there. But let's have a look at the masking. We can control it if we click on masking here and we can see there we are, we have two controls. We have luminance and chrominance. So luminance is the brightness, so we can use the brightness to refine that mask, and we can also use the color. So notice by using the color, we can just cut the water right out. And let's increase the luminance, so we get more of the cliffs, and see how we can really refine where we want that adjustment to go. Now, let me just turn off the mask again, and so we can see there's our adjustment. And if we look at it before and after, notice it's just hitting the area that we want. Now, of course, we can increase that light strength. We could make it stronger. We could make it warmer. We've got all this control, and we can use this with the control point. But look at all the different parameters that we can use with this, with this control point. Control points have always been one of those things that set the Nick collection uh, apart from some of the other software, it's just really quick and easy to use and, uh, and it enables us to do those localized corrections. And of course we can save these as our own presets. 
or if we want to replace them let's look at some of the presets look at this we've got the black gold preset we're just going to replace this right now really quickly you know if it feels like whoa that's a little much we can take that intensity back and we have almost 100 new presets in the collection one of them is the uh, 25th anniversary so we've got some different presets in here that we could look at All right, back in Photoshop, let's have a look at the film grains. So we're going to go back into Color Effects Pro. And one of the other items you'll see on the right hand side is grain. So let me zoom into a one to one. And we can preview these just by rolling over them. So DxO have actually spent a lot of time scanning and analyzing different film types to reproduce the structure and the texture you would get from the actual film itself. So it's not just adding a little bit of grain to these photos. So if you're familiar with some of these, you know, like the Polaroids, you can start to see how that really faithfully reproduces some of these different types of uh, film grain that you would get on the actual film. So pricing is a perpetual license, means that you buy it, you own it, it's $149. If you have version four, you can update to version five for $79 by logging into your account. So I'm curious what you guys think. Let me know what your favorite plugin is. And also I'm curious if you guys have ever used Nick Collection. I'd be curious, drop that in the comments underneath. And by the way, if you're new, hit the subscribe button, turn on notifications, you won't miss any of my weekly videos. So anyway, guys, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up. That's the like button on YouTube. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.